But let's get into some more happy Spurs things. And I think one way that we could transition that into something that maybe will put a smile on your face, Spurs basketball wise, is mm-hmm. talking about Devin Vassell, the 23 mm. year old uh, Robin to Batman that is Victor Wembanyama, as you've coined him, you know, throughout the past season since that's happened. But more importantly, uh, I mean, even going into this year, as we've talked about our best off the dribble score, um, probably. You know, uh, one of the one of the more experienced guys on the team at this point. Um, obviously, we got CP3 and Harrison Barnes coming, and I forget about that as soon as mm. I say that. But out of our young core, one of the more tenured Spurs, I think he's only the second, or he's the second most tenured Spur of our young core next to Keldon. Right. Um, and really is just going to be, you know, I mean, he is a pillar of the Spurs rebuild, if you will, Ethan. And I think this year with him coming in to his first year of his brand new contract, a five year, I think, I can't remember the exact numbers on on his deal, but a substantial amount of money for Devin Vassell um, coming into this new role or this new contract. Um, he, he's going to be a pillar of this team moving forward, Ethan. What are your thoughts on him going into this season? what he can bring, his strengths and weaknesses. Mm. Really, what I'm trying to get to is we know what Devin has. We know his potential, but how can he get to the next level? Yeah, it's extremely exciting. Um, I think to speak to his value, what he brings to the rebuild moving forward, uh, most national media outlets had him as the only other untouchable in trade discussions this offseason. I know we and other Spurs fans might consider you know, Jeremy or you know whoever else also in that category, but in, in, in ESPN and the national media is concerned, it's Victor Wimbanyama and Devin Vassell. That speaks volumes. Uh, what we can expect from him this season, I think, is a pretty substantial jump. You talked about his contract. He has to play up to that now. There's no more excuses. He had a great season last year, I feel like, at almost 20 points per game. His chemistry with Victor gradually built. I feel like we gave him the ball and let him be a ball handler more last year, I would actually see that even dipping back a little bit, especially with Chris Paul's arrival. I think Chris Paul will help him get back to the roots of what made him so special at Florida State and why we drafted him, and that's as an off-the-ball score. I think back to his off-ball movement reminiscent of, say, Rip Hamilton, Chris Middleton, guys like that, and he really hasn't been able to play in that style because of just the need for him to be you know, a ball dominant player. Now he he still has that in his game and down the stretch late in games, he's still probably going to be our our number one ISO guy to take someone off the dribble outside of Victor. Um, But I still think that it'll open up the rest of his game and allow him to get more three point volume under his belt, which will just boost his offensive scoring load probably to 20. uh, If I'm going to predict it, I'm going to say 22 points per game next year, Jude is my assumption for him on more efficient scoring. As far as, weaknesses for Devin um I think a lot of people shoot at his defense lately and I I think that's kind of funny because that's why we drafted him and physically he's capable I think last year was kind of a I don't even think it was bad I think it's just people that were just trying to find something to criticize about Devin Vassell Uh, but I think he needs to get stronger at finishing at the rim I think he needs to be more aggressive at times last year there were moments where he kind of you know, stepped back and let other players assert themselves. And I'm like, no, Devin, you're the second best player. You need to assert yourself. So I think it's just a mindset thing for him. And outside of that, I think he has the skill set and tools at his disposal to be a very effective player. And and I don't want to say all-star because the West is so stacked, but at least an all-star talent, if you will. No, for sure. I mean, that's a great point of what you put there, like an all-star level player. Now in the West, (laughs) there's so many big names, you know, especially at the guard position. You know, it may take a couple years for for Devin to be able to sneak in there. Um, But I think the way that you just put it is is a really, really good encapsulation. And, And one of the things that I was thinking about while you were talking is one of the ways that last year kind of benefited Devin is that now with Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes, and obviously Harrison Barnes isn't necessarily a ball handler, but with Chris Paul coming into the starting lineup, um, with him, you know, playing more of an off ball off ball role, obviously, with again Chris Paul being in the starting lineup, 
the experiences that he had last year where he did have to take the ball up the floor, he did try to have to orchestrate some sets. He did have to just do a lot of isolation and creativity because we didn't have that many structured sets last year. I think that those experiences are still going to benefit him. Like you said, down the stretch, if we need somebody to go off the dribble in isolation, like he has those reps now you know, in real NBA games. But again, that's not, and, and, and at the same time, we, you know, he's still 23 years old. Ideally, that can continue to just get better and better, especially at the start of this contract. But at the same time, where he can be maximized and also where he can kind of have the load taken off of him a little bit offensively as well, you know, is in that new, you know, position that he'll kind of be playing in a sense next to Chris Paul. I mean, he's going to be told where to go. I guarantee you he's going to be in corners. He's going to be on the wing. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll even see more floppy sets for Devin because he's not going to have to handle the ball all the time coming up the floor. Um, I know we still probably did see that from time to time, but still, when I look back on it, there were a lot of times last year where, where Devin was having to bring the ball up the floor and mm-hmm. kind of orchestrate things and just create. I mean, really, as we talked about at nauseum last season, <laughs> the main positive of our offense was the Victor Wembanyama Devin Vassell pick and roll. So that led to him being, you know, a ball handler much more often. And, you know, not to repeat everything that I've said, but obviously with Chris Paul coming in, that is not going to be the case so I think the load taken off of him offensively is going to allow him to be more effective when he does have to go off the dribble as well as just getting more catch and shoot uh opportunities which again ties into like if you want to nitpick one thing even though we probably both agree that he's progressively gotten better defensively as his career has gone on not saying he's perfect or there's not room to grow but I, I mean I personally feel like I saw some defensive things from Devin last year that I didn't see in years past, just in terms of his on-ball defense, getting hands in passing lanes, you know, creating transition opportunities for for other guys, you know, by by getting steals or just getting deflections on the ball. All of the offensive stuff that Chris Paul is going to unlock, if you will, for him as an off-ball player, as well as, like I said, taking the load off, that's also going to mean that he's going to have more energy to expend on defense. Mm. Um so, man, I mean, I, I I really don't have too much to criticize about Devin Vassell. I know that's tough, you know, when it's two straight seasons of 22 and 60 and he was on the roster and one of the main players. But again, that just goes back to what I always harp on. Like, what is the context of that? Like, mm-hmm. you know, the situation that he was in. I think when you add a, a Harrison Barnes and a Chris Paul, I mean, we've been talking about Chris Paul so much. We talked about it last week. There are going to be real orchestrated sets that are run where he will have like an individual thing that he has to do instead of like, okay, how am I going to figure out how to get a bucket to me and Victor, you know, (laughs) when we're just driving and kicking or trying to get a bucket off the dribble. Does that make sense? For sure. And if I were to nitpick again and select one negative, and I guess this pertains to everybody on our team, uh, win some games would be nice. And I'm not saying all the losses are Devin's fault. They're definitely not. But uh, there's a switch there on a winning mentality. And I think Chris Paul, we talked about, will provide that. But we need to see that in Devin as well. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot, a, a lot that goes into that is just straight up executing down the stretch. Right. For sure. For sure. Right. And starting right. How many games it, when, How many games total did we start well and end well? Probably like less than five, right? It was always one or the other. We either finished strong but couldn't come back in time or we – Started great and then just dropped the ball in the third quarter. Yeah. So consistency. Yeah. I mean, again, there's really not too much to nitpick with Devin Vassell. Like I said, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the main thing, if you want to go to the numbers, is just the efficiency. But I really think that the circumstances are going to kind of automatically make that happen. Um, Maybe... Maybe automatically isn't the best word there, but it's definitely going to make that efficiency, you know, it, it's going to make it a lot easier for Devin to be efficient because of the situations that he'll be put in this year. A hundred percent. I think Harrison Barnes is getting lost in this discussion. I'm glad you continually bring him up, but he's also a veteran presence that's a, a, a good enough playmaker, a connective piece that's going to open up the floor for all of these guys as well. Yeah, and he'll be able to teach, not that Devin needs to learn a whole ton about this, but think about Harrison Barnes's role on the um, you know, on the prime Warriors. Warriors yeah. Right, as a catch and shoot guy. He can definitely help Devin out with that and how to like move off the ball while you're still in that role. You know, I mean, sometimes you are just going to be sitting in the corner. 
Like that's just, that could just be the situation depending on the set. But a lot of times, you know, they'll kind of trail guys or have to move around the wing depending on what's going on with the rest of the offense. So anyways, we could go into the nitty gritty of that forever. The point is Chris Paul is going to help orchestrate the offense, which is going to benefit Devin and Harrison Barnes can teach him a ton as well. Agreed.